Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're gonna to have a little man versus machine. It's going to be me versus ChatGPT to see if either of us would be able to pass the Danish citizenship test. That's right. The Danish citizenship test is offered two times a year. And in order to become a Danish citizen, you have to pass the test with a score of at least 36 out of 45 questions correct. You have 45 minutes to take the test and it is multiple choice. However, it's in Danish, so a little bit of a challenge there. Now, I'm going to give Mike the questions in English. I will give him the multiple choice questions, but ChatGPT is just getting the straight up question and we'll see who can do better and which one of you or ChatGPT could possibly become a Danish citizen. Mikey, are you ready for question one? Let's do it. Okay. Question one is, what is the Donnebro? Is that A, the Danish national anthem, B, the Danish flag, or C, a trench in Schleswig that played a key part in the War of 1864? I'm going to say B, it's the Danish flag. And can I get bonus points that it's also the Queen's yacht? I don't know that you'll get bonus points mm -hmm. on the Danish national citizenship test, but um, also it's not very... Jan to brag. So I think I may have to deduct points on the Danish values section. Um, but that is correct. ChatGPT also got this correct and even went on to explain the design of the flag, the history of it, that according to legend, it fell from the sky, all the things that everybody should know if they're going to get Danish citizenship. So fair enough. Yeah. ChatGPT also was a little bit of a brown noser and offered more information. But question two. Mm -hmm. Which Danish author wrote the book, The African Farm? Is that A, Ken Blixen, B, Hosi Anderson, or C, Tovit Dietlifsen? I'm glad I'm not doing the language test because my Danish pronunciation is... That's okay. You got Ken Blixen right, and I think that's the correct answer. That It's her that wrote the book, and I think this is also the... It became a famous movie out of Africa as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I can stop with the bragging and showing off more answers. Uh, but you're, you are right. And I do think the one exception to the Yatalan is that if you're bragging about Denmark, that seems to be quite... I think you are allowed to do that. And ChatGPT did the same. And um, actually talked about... The, actually, it sounds like an interesting story. It takes place in in Kenya. I would... Uh, yeah, I think this sounds interesting. But in the summer reading list. It may be on the summer reading list. Yeah. So Ken Blixen, I think, um, yeah, is a good part of Danish heritage. You should know in the Danish citizenship test, which brings up question number three. When did Denmark get financial help from the USA in connection with the Marshall Plan? Was it A, around 1920, B, around 1950, or C, in the 1980s? I'm going to say it's the 1950s. That's one that we learned about in school in the U.S. as well. So I think even before we came to Denmark, I probably could have answered that one correctly, all after World War II. Yes. So Marshall Plan and ChatGPT got that correct and um, even put the exact dates, <laughs> 1948 to 1952. Um, yes, so that was part of Reconstruction after World War II. Question four, for which film did Gabriel Axel win an Oscar in 1988? We know Denmark famously does pretty well in the foreign film category <laughs> in the Oscars and surprised me that Danes like to watch the Academy Awards. I wouldn't expect that, but a lot of people have viewing parties and stay up late to watch the Academy Awards. And in 1988, if they did that, what film would they have seen win by director Gabriel Axel? Would it have been A, Druck, B, for B, Italian for Beginners, I'll just say it in English, or C, Babette's Feast, which... Um, yeah, I'll just say it in English. Uh, so I'm not as good with more pop stuff. I know it's not in joke because that one is just a couple of years ago. I'm years there. Ago. It's either, I have to do a 50-50 guess on this one here. I'm going to go with B? No. No, it was C. It was Babette's Feast. Gaspel. Um, let's see how ChatGBT did get it correct. It's also based on a can Blixa. Oh, God. Blixa. I'm going to get red to fill. I feel like this oh, is, man. I'm this, sorry. This is like the can Blixer uh, quiz, not the Danish citizenship test. This is like, do you want to, <laughs> this is like the Karen Blixer, like pop culture. Uh... I was guessing, I figured the, well, I get it. Obviously, I think if you understand Danish culture, you probably would have recognized the titles. I didn't. I was kind of going on a limb thinking that. Maybe a little bit of a curveball that you wouldn't think it's something with Italian would be it. They were all, they were all Danish films. They were all Danish films. So, okay. um, and I'm not sure if they were all Academy Award nominated. I know Druck obviously was a winner, mm -hmm. and uh, now we know that 
it was not the first winner, so that's great. Uh, yeah, something to, something to watch now. Speaking of not a winner, that is uh, one missed for you and none missed for ChatGPT. You can see if you can pick it up. Number five, what party did workers typically vote for in the 1900s, the mid-1900s? Mm -hmm. Was it A, Venstra, B, Social Democrats, or C, Radical Venstra? We're going to say that it would be the Social Democrats, which would be the Arbeits Party. Correct. So the, the Labor Party. ChatGPT gave a very long answer um, explaining how basically in the post-World War II era, the Danish workers typically voted for the Social Democrats and explained more of the history and um, several key policies that can be credited to the Social Democrat. And so we had been to the Arbeids Museum, the Workers Museum here in Copenhagen. So I yeah. had to learn a little bit about it then on that visit as well. Yeah. So see, you're doing your part, getting your culture and understanding Danish values, which is the point of the citizenship test. So one off because you didn't know all of the Karen Blix. Every no, Karen Blixer novel and Academy Bill. Award nominated and winning movies. Yeah. I wouldn't stress, but you are on thin ice now. So number six, which parts of Denmark are connected? You should know this. Which parts of Denmark are connected by the Great Belt Fixed Link or the Store Belt? Uh, is it A, Fun and Yulin, uh, B, Yulin and Shilin, or C, Shilin and Fun? That'll be C, Fun and Shilin, which is where the Great Belt is, separating the two islands. That's correct. We drove over it. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's true. It was completed in 1998. Before that, it was only ferry crossings. So, and I've heard stories from from coworkers that you know back in the time had to go across the ferry at Christmas time and hope that you didn't get a storm coming to travel between Sheeland and Fuen or Jutland. So, yeah, I think the the belt has been uh, the bridge has been a really good addition to the country, connecting the country together. Yeah, they actually. I was surprised that it was only as old as 1998. Uh, I kind of figured it was older, and I I. I I went down a rabbit hole. I almost want to do a whole video on this. Like, mm. I'll nerd out on this. I was researching a lot. It was just so cool. I was like, oh, let me learn more about that. Let me learn more about that. 1850s is when they actually proposed building wow. the bridge crossing. And it just got delayed and delayed. It involved a lawsuit with Finland at one point. It just kept getting delayed and pushed back. Um, and different austere parties took over government and it was shelved for a while. So finally in 1998, it was- I mean, it's a major project. It's yeah. not like a minor undertaking, but yeah. then you look at it and it's like, we should do a whole video on the whole transport Heading links to. between the uh, the store belt, between the the Usland belt and between now the Fountain yeah. belt coming down between yeah. uh, Denmark and Germany. So I think fascinating kind of the three ways that Sheelan is connected to the rest of, well, the world. Yeah. If you like bridges, then you'll like learning about Danish history. and. ChatGPT did know this as well, so I don't know if um, ChatGPT has to pay the toll that we did to cross, but um, it is expensive, but ChatGPT does know the answer and got it correct. So probably has bro biz, it can go, go over pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, it just flies, flies right through AI. Mm -hmm. um, taking over. So number seven, what country was Denmark forced to relinquish to Sweden at the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1814? Was that a, Norway, B, Iceland, or C, Greenland? It would be A, Norway. That is correct. Denmark, Norway lost the English Wars. That was a series of conflicts between the British and Swedish and Denmark, who got drug in and, yeah, yeah. the Copenhagenization. Uh, twice got twice got blown by the British for doing nothing. Yes. Yeah. But um, on the Tree of Kiel, I did get to, you know, retain it for a time. Iceland and Greenland, and it clarified things. And the Norwegians finally got their independence uh, yeah. a century later. Yeah. And our Norwegian friends all very proudly enjoy, was it May 17th? May 17th, the, yes. A Norwegian. You see, you could get maybe Norwegian citizenship. At least one question. At least one question right there. Um, all, and, the, all the other questions in Norway are either going to be fish or oil, I would assume. Yeah, so. yeah I guess so you're not going to get Norwegian citizenship, yeah. so. Uh, ChatGPT did get this correct and knew, uh, yeah, a lot of that same information. So ChatGPT also mentioned the Treaty of Kiel. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Next question. On January 1st, 2007, Denmark was divided into regions. How many regions was Denmark divided into? Was it A, 13, B, 7, or C, 5? Uh, hold on, let me do a quick math. And we were able to vote in the region election. Yeah, so you should we were able it. to. Um, crap, let me think quickly. Or so, I'm going to make sure you don't get your thing. Uh, seven. No. Oh, 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 oh. Shoot. 
<laughs> no, uh, it's five. Okay. So um, on January 7th, Denmark was divided into five regions. It's the capital region, mm -hmm. uh, central Denmark region, or mid uh region of southern Denmark, Sud Denmark, and north Denmark, nor Yulin, um, and the Sheeland region. Is Foon not its own region? Look, wow. I didn't draw the I didn't draw the maps. No, no, no. I get where I get your. That's what my math says because you said yeah. five. I thought five was too few because I knew there were, I knew there were at least three in Jutland. I knew that there's two in Sheeland because we're region host of them, so it's on our yellow cards and stuff. Yeah. Um, crap. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. All right. Well, so I don't. <laughs> I think you're going to have to study uh, if you're ever eligible otherwise for citizenship, which. You aren't, but let's move on to question nine. What party founded in 1959 is still in parliament today? Would that be A, the Socialist People's Party or SF? Would that be the Social Liberal Party, Radical Venstra, or the Danish People's Party, Dansk Folkparti? I'm going to say SF because I think Radical Venstra has been around for a long time and Dansk Folkparti is relatively new, 90s or so. That's correct. It is as if. I'm better at politics than yeah, industry. Yeah, we do you follow politics that. pretty closely. So, yeah, yeah thanks. I can see that. I'm still hurt by getting the regions went oh, wrong. Well, well, like uh, Karen Blixen and regions. That's a little. Like, well, <laughs> what region is Ken Blixer from? I don't, I'm not even going to bother asking. Uh, Sheila, there's, there's signs there. You go north and Sheila. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I know. Maybe, yeah. um, maybe it was just for Summer House. But you never know. How can the Danish constitution be changed? Is it A, the government requires a simple majority in parliament to change the constitution? Mm -hmm. Is it B, a change of the constitution requires support of both parliament and the population via referendum? Or is it C, only the monarch can change the constitution? I'm going to say it's B because we had that recently when they changed some of the Denmark exceptions um, for the EU treaties variously when they had the referendum last year. Yeah, I will say that you are correct. ChatGPT was also correct and completely outlined a six-step process. Um, and I'm not completely positive because they also added a step where the monarch is involved and the queen would have to sign off and approve it. I know she's just a figurehead for a lot of Everything things. Sign all legislate. So, so it would make sense yeah. that she has to yeah. give it her stamp. Though yeah. It's a bit of a, a rubber stamp yeah. these days as so opposed to... Royal assent was not mentioned by you or the test itself. So I'm I, I, I think it's assumed in the process for me. Just a little more background on that. Um, it has to be a simple majority in parliament and then a referendum. Mm -hmm. At least 40% of the population has to vote for it. And then, so as long as 40% of the population votes in the referendum and it passes, it passes. The most recent constitutional change was in 1953. And in 1915, there was a constitutional change that was updated to give women the right to vote. So I think for those things, it may have been, that there was a referendum, okay. but it was, a but I don't know that, choice. I don't know that it was, a, I don't, th I think that's maybe the difference. It wasn't a constitutional change. Got it. I think it was just the Danish signing off on the, those aspects of the Maastricht Treaty. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure somebody will let us know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, let like us the last one wrote 1953. Through. So, uh, what is the name of the royal residence in Copenhagen? Is it A. Rosenborg, B. Amelia Borg, or C. Klesenborg? It's going to be B. Amelia Borg. That is correct. Yeah. It is Amelia Borg. Um, beautiful. And ChatGPT also got that correct and even mentioned the changing of the guards at noon. So, I don't know if you're ever at Amelia Bo at noon watching the changing of the guards and maybe you'll catch ChatGPT there they obviously know a lot about it so if you see if you see in the crowd that ChatGPT is watching the changing of the lifeguards at Amelia Bo you may see that in fact we went there recently for a video here on 14 things that you may not know about Copenhagen. Mm. Uh, definitely a great attraction, and we think that you should check it out if you're ever in Copenhagen. So click here and watch this video next. And Mike got too wrong, but... Sorry, guys. Study up on your Karen Blix's knowledge. Yeah. yeah, but thanks for watching, everybody. Hi, hi. hi.